everyone, welcome back to Style Novice. Recently I invested in my first interchangeable lens camera for my blog, for my YouTube videos, for life in general. I was putting off a ton of projects until it arrived. Only to open up the box and realise I had no idea what to do with all the extra settings available to me. Uh, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, what they all meant and how they correspond to each other. So in simple, very beginner terms, this is what I've learnt so far. So starting with Aperture, it's also known as F-Stop, which makes a whole lot more sense to me because on the settings of your camera, it'll show up as F2.2, F5.6, F22, etc, etc. So the lower the number, the more light your lens is living in when you take your shot, which creates more blur in the background of your photo. The higher the number, the less light it's living in, and the sharper your background will be. When it came to creating a mental image in my mind of what aperture or f-stop meant and how it relates to how much light the lens is letting in per shot, per setting, I really found that this image helped me to understand. I'll link the source below in the description box. So on to shutter speed, this controls how long your lens is open during your shot. So a short shutter speed of say a hundredth of a second for example is perfect for sports or action shots where you want to catch a motion without any blur. A longer shutter speed of say up to six seconds is perfect for capturing motion of your object throughout a length of time just like the light trails of traffic at night. Lastly, we're down to ISO, which I like to call my exposure setting. Upping your ISO setting lets in more light to what may be a naturally dim environment that you're trying to take your photo in. Now, the more you up your ISO, the grainier your images will become, so it is a balancing act. So when it comes to all three of these settings working together, your aperture, your shutter speed and your ISO to create the perfect image that you are wanting to take, whatever that may be that you're wanting to achieve, I like to think of it as a seesaw. I found that this image really helped me. I'll link the source below of where I got this from. Uh, you start with one setting and imagine that this is in the middle and imagine that the other two are on a seesaw which you're needing to balance to get the perfect correlation between all three settings to achieve the perfect image. So this video has been about understanding what these settings mean and how they correspond to each other to create the perfect image. However, most DSLRs will have semi-automatic options, which means you can take one or two of the three factors away, so you're just dealing with one at a time. Um, I do recommend playing around with these, uh, and you can see in different lighting conditions, indoors, outdoors, uh, sports matches or portrait photos, what the camera is choosing in these situations and learn from that to then have a play around in full manual mode. So when you do feel confident flicking that camera into manual mode and giving all three of these settings a go, I highly recommend popping along to the Canon site which I've linked below also. They have a virtual camera where you can play around with all three settings and see how it differs the exposure and the aperture and the blur in the background and how everything correlates to each other and how they work together and you can play around with it on the computer before you give it a go in real life. Now it's not even a, a Canon camera that I bought but I did find that it was a great resource that I found online that's lots of fun and really helpful. So that is it for today's video. I hope I've explained everything in simple terms. Um, if you'd like to recap or go over any of these explanations, I have written a blog post which I'll link below also and I'll see you next time. Best of luck with manual mode.